Hi everyone and welcome to Creative Cakes by Sharon. Today I'm creating this sweet little cake of Sophia the First. Sophia is the first Disney princess in my upcoming series of Disney princess cakes and being the littlest I thought why not start with her. Make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to my channel so you can see each of the princess tutorials as I release them. So let's get started. I have here my Sophia the First template and you can get a copy of this in the description box below. And I also have an enlarged picture of her tiara. I've got a 10 inch square cake, which I've already baked and cooled. I've got my fondant roller, a large serrated knife, a pair of scissors, a sharp knife, a palette knife, an offset spatula, a couple of fluffy brushes. I've got an edible marker here. I've got some brown fondant as well as some flesh colored fondant a little bit of white, some black, a little bit of orange, and a little bit of blue. I've also got two round cutters. I've got the smallest of my round cutters as well as approximately a one inch cutter. Here I have some silver sugar beads, a little bit of water and another paintbrush. I'm also using some petal dust today. I've got silver and light pink, as well as these purple edible glittery flakes. I'm going to be using some white chocolate ganache and some purple buttercream frosting and of course I've got my board which I've covered in purple fondant and decorated the edge with a Sophia the First princess design. So to start with I'm just going to use my long serrated knife and carefully trim off the little dome that I have at the top of my cake. Using the purple buttercream frosting I'm going to fill the center of my cake and pop the top of the cake back on. Next I need to cut the shape of my cake out so I've got my template on top of my cake and I've just folded over the top of her tiara and then holding my knife nice and vertical I'm going to carefully cut all the way around the template and then remove the excess cake. Now I want to create a few different layers in this cake. So the first part will be to remove the face section of the template and cut around the inside of her hairline. So I'm going to insert my knife about one centimeter into the cake and carefully cut all the way around. And then I'm going to score the cake with some diagonal lines in this center section. And then to remove this part of the cake, I'm just going to use my offset spatula and slide it in from the front of the cake and scoop out the little pieces. I want to continue my layering effect, so I'm going to cut out the sides and top of Sophia's hair. And then I'm going to score around these edges and carefully cut into the cake, lifting off just about a half a centimeter of the cake. This particular section of the carving is not as deep as the section I did for her face. And in the end, it's going to leave me with three different raised sections of the cake. Using my white chocolate ganache now, I'm going to cover the entire cake this is going to add to the flavor of the cake as well as acting as a crumb coat and also providing a nice surface for the fondant to stick to. Once the cake is covered entirely, I'm going to put it in the fridge for about 15 minutes to set. Once the cake has come out of the fridge, it's firm to the touch and I'm going to smooth over the surface using my offset spatula and some boiling water here in my bowl. So once I heat up the spatula in the bowl, I wipe off any of the excess water and gently smooth over the ganache. After covering the cake in the ganache now, my template for Sophia's face is a little bit too large to fit into the cavity. So I need to trim it down enough so that it fits nice and snug into the space that's left. Before I cover Sophia's face with the fondant, I'm going to add some little features. So I'm going to roll a little ball into the shape of her nose. She has a tiny little nose and I'm going to use the template as a guide to get the correct shape. And I'm also going to roll one little snake, which I taper on both edges and place that on top of her lips. To position these pieces of fondant in the correct spot, I'm going to score the template with my X-Acto blade just to create an impression onto the ganache and then position these two pieces of fondant onto the cake. 
Now I'm ready to start covering the cake and I've rolled my fondant out to about 2-3mm to three mils thick and with the template on top I'm going to cut a little neck section for her. This will cover the front of the cake and cut all the way around the template. Once I carefully roll this onto my roller I'm going to drape it over the top of her face section. Then it's a matter of smoothing the fondant out, carefully going around the features underneath and trimming off any of the excess. I'm going to work on Sophia's lips now and she's got very tiny little thin lips. So using the back end of a paintbrush, I'm just going to press into that fondant which I laid underneath and create a line in between her top and bottom lip. I'm going to build this up gradually until I get it looking as close to as possible as a template as I can. And before I put my paintbrush away, I'm just going to press into the fondant at the bottom of her nose to create two tiny little nostrils. Using my light pink petal dust and my fluffy brush, I'm going to add some colour to her lips as well as her cheeks. For Sophia's hair, I'm going to cover the cake in sections. So I'm starting off with this little piece and when I cut out the pieces of fondant, I need to make sure that I've always got enough to go down the front and sides of the cake. And then it's a matter of simply positioning the fondant onto the cake, smoothing down the edges and trimming off the excess. So I'm going to repeat this process for the remaining two sections of hair at this same level. Once I get to the top section of her hair, I'm going to blend in this piece of orange fondant to create a little bit of a streaky effect and lighten up the brown fondant. Then as I roll out the fondant, you'll be able to see that I've got a bit of an orange streak in my fondant and then I'm simply going to cut the fondant and lay it over the top of the cake. Now using the top part of her hair template again, I've just split the template where her hair parts there and I'm going to cut out two more pieces of this fondant just so that I can emphasise the little curl at the end of her hair. Now using the back of my paintbrush, I'm going to create some waves in Sophia's hair just using my template as a guide. Sophia's eyes are fairly easy to create and after I've cut them out of the template I'm going to cut the white sections of the eyes out of some white fondant which I've rolled and before I put the white fondant away I've rolled two tiny little balls which I'll use later then using my one inch round cutter I'm going to cut out two blue circles and adhere them to the white fondant and then using the small round cutter I'm going to cut out two black circles and adhere them as well and finish off with the tiny little white balls. Next I'm going to cut two skinny strips which are going to form the top of her eyelashes and using the template as a guide to position the eyes in the correct spot I'm going to adhere them to the cake followed by the top section of her eyelash and then with a little skinny snake I cut into four sections I'm going to position these at the corners of her eyes for her remaining eyelashes. Sophia's eyebrows are made by rolling two little snakes of brown fondant and then I've just adhered them onto the cake. And finally to finish off Sophia's eyes I'm just using my edible marker and outlining the whites and blue section of her eyes. Sophia's tiara sits on the second level of the cake right across here and this is where the blown up version of her tiara comes in handy to see all the little details. So the first thing I need to do is create the base of her tiara. So I'm going to roll out a long snake and just make sure that it actually fits nicely across most of the top of her head because the one that we can see in the picture is a little bit shorter because it's covered by her hair. Once I've got a nice length, I'm going to start rolling several other pieces of the white fondant and start building up her tiara. I found it easiest if I just put my fondant on top of the template and that way I get the exact shape. Now I've rolled out some little balls of the white fondant and these are eventually going to become the little purple jewels in her tiara. 
So I'm going to take each little ball of fondant and gently wet the top and the sides and then drop it into my jar of purple glitter flakes. Using my palette knife, I'm just going to toss it around very gently and make sure that the top and sides are nicely coated before lifting it out and leaving it aside. Once I've created all my purple jewels, I'm going to now use my silver petal dust to cover Sophia's tiara. Using the back of my paintbrush again, I'm going to press into the fondant to create a series of little holes which I'm going to use to place my sugar beads in. Before placing the sugar beads in, you need to moisten the little holes with a little bit of water, otherwise the sugar beads will simply roll off the fondant. Now I can transfer my tiara onto the top of Sophia's head and add all of the little purple jewels. Once I've transferred her onto my cake board, I've got my finished Sophia the First Princess cake. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I love hearing from you and read all of your comments, so drop me a line in the section below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see all my creative cake tutorials as I release them. And as always, thanks for watching.